I eat. We're we're now live. We are live. Welcome. This is uh, Thursday afternoon, March 11th, Senate Government Operations Committee. We've been discussing a rather shortened agenda for the day. So uh, we're going to do two things, really. We're going to listen to an amendment proposal by Senator Parent rel on, on our S-15. I think it's S-15, right? The elections bill. He has an amendment yeah. to show us. We'll discuss that. Then later, we're going to talk with Michelle Childs from the Legislative Council about what we've done so far around cannabis and whether or not we've, we're prepared to sort of finish up that job in terms of what our committee is going to do around the cannabis bill. The cannabis bill, as you know, is in the Judiciary Committee. We've been asked to take a look at it. We've decided to make a couple of changes to it, none of which are particularly dramatic, I don't think, but Michelle's going to go over them with us. She has drafted some language that she wants to go over with us. Now, she got brought to the call to the House of Representatives a couple of minutes ago, so we're not exactly sure when she'll be back. But we're gonna we'll do our best to wait for her to come back and then talk through the the, the amendment she wrote for the cannabis bill. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and Virginia, I know you're probably here for to talk about representing dispensaries and whatnot. So you just can be patient and wait and hope that Michelle said she wouldn't be gone long, but you never know what things are on the floor. Okay, thank you, Senator. Just, uh, so let's let's turn to Senator Parent and and uh, Amarin's here as well to go through the amendment. Is that okay, Amarin? Yes, for the record, Amarin Amarjali, Legislative Council. So, Senator Corey, Corey, Parent. Corey, do you want to say anything before we get go before we walk through it? No, I, I I think we had our discussion on the purpose, and and Amarin and I tried to do our best to to put that into language last night. Um, so I'll let her go through it and then be here if you have any questions as to what you know my thinking was in, in drafting it this way. Okay. And is everyone able to see the draft amendment? It's posted to yeah, it's the on community's our webpage. Website. It's yes. on yeah, the website. Got it. Okay, perfect. So this amendment would uh, amend the strike all amendment that the committee is recommending for S-15. Uh, specifically, a first amendment in within section three, which is the Australian ballot system section uh, for local elections under Title 17. And this would, I believe, okay, this version does not have a highlight. So um, the present strike all amendment that the committee uh, voted out has G1 to, um, excuse me, G1, 2, 4, and 5. And this amendment would insert a new subsection 3 at the bottom of page 1 to say that any municipality that has voted to apply the Australian ballot system but did not vote to mail its annual or special meeting ballot to all active registered voters shall mail an absentee ballot request form to all active registered voters. The remainder of subsection G remains the same as the uh, strike all amendment that um, this committee voted out. So, and I... I added this piece in, I brought it up briefly yesterday. It wasn't a piece, but while we do this study and go on, I know we did these postcards last year at the primary. And, and this is in light of that, because while we're waiting for a response from the study committee, I still want to try to make access to these elections a little bit easier. And you know, I think giving people at least the opportunity to remind them that there's an election they can request an absentee. Um, is the least we can do and doesn't really change anything. But does um, this, I thought we were talking, I'm not being judgmental. The, study committee, the, re, the rest of it's the study committee, but I, I put this piece in as well. But this piece doesn't necessarily relate to town meetings. Nope, it's any election. To all the elections. Yep, that where we have Australian ballot that you have to, a lot, you have to just mail voters the ability to request an absentee ballot. I think I think it's a good reminder with how confusing these next couple of years will be, particularly <laughs> with the primary two. I mean, it's just like we're right. we're confusing people. <laughs> we should. Yeah. It's like putting up the orange flags on the side of the new stop sign. Like we need to give people some transition time at the very least. 
Yeah, and the way I look at it, we all know that every election is different. We know the primaries are party elections. We know town meeting day are local elections. We know the general election is a general election. The average voter just sees it as an election, you know, on all of them. So I, I, you know, again, I, I'm, you know, the study committee is the rest of it, but I just, I think this is just one piece. I, I don't. Well, tell me, tell me how, tell me how life would be different with, with this piece. Well, this is what we did uh, for the primary, and we saw increased primary turnout this summer. We, we mailed people. We're not mailing them a ballot. So people who are concerned about mailing ballots, um, you're not doing it. You're also starting to build the ability for town clerks to get you, because a lot of this is just them seeing and doing the work. And I think by mailing the absentee request, people can mail it back and get their ballot, they can choose to go in, but we're not mailing them the ballot, so you don't have as expensive of a cost. But also too, what I find really helpful in a lot of this and what my town clerks have found helpful in uh, mailing these and ballots is cleaning up their checklists. There's a lot of people that they can't find. And so this is just another tool in that. So again, the goal of this bill in my mind is to make it easier to vote. And this is just a small step in making it easier to vote. So the bill that, we're, that we've been moving forward with would have us do mail-in voting for the general elections, the statewide elections, but not the primaries, but just at statewide rate, right, Amarin, is that true? Yes. So this would extend the use of the, the encouragement of the absentee ballots to other elections, meaning the primary elections and potentially town meeting elections? This specifically is around all local elections um, because the... Um, the goal yes. here is, I mean, yeah, we, we could eventually build it, but I, I think to belabor, I, I think we just want to increase access, especially local, we're, we're heading down this path. Um, right. so, I mean, this is, this isn't to me, the guts of the amendment, but this is just also keeping pressure in my mind on us as legislators that after this study comes in, we actually do something with it. Right. But like, you know, Senator Rahm said, we, my biggest fear is you're going to confuse voters with this bill without doing what I really want to do. But I understand I don't have the support necessarily of the committee to do that. I, I think, I think we're going to be saying overall, this was a mistake at some level. and We're going to have to do a lot of fixing it in future years, but that's okay. We'll have a study committee to tell us how to fix it. So. Right. So, Corey, uh, with this adding number three, you're saying that even if a town, a town currently in the bill may choose to mail out its ballots, as they did this year at town meeting, many towns did, as we discussed. Um, and what you're saying here is that even if they've chosen with that option, which will now we know will be discussed pretty fully, and my guess is at select board meetings, um, if they actively choose not to mail out ballots, they have to mail out an absentee postcard, postcard requesting an absentee ballot. Yes. Yes. Okay, that's all, that's all this first piece does, is what I understand. Yep. Okay, I understand it better now, having, having heard you say that. Okay. It's Thanks. more clear. <laughs> okay. So, that's, so they're not going to mail out apps. They're not going to mail out ballots to everybody, but they have to at least do the mailing of the request for absentee ballots. Yes. Okay. I like it. Any, anything else on this particular piece before we move on? No, that's, that was okay. the substance. That's the first amendment part of the amendment. Yes. And moving to the second. Uh, recommended amendment on page two. This would add a new section 21A because I did not want to renumber um, any other sections of the underlying amendment. Um, so a new section 21A would create a voting access study committee. And the purpose of the study committee would be to evaluate how to expand Vermonters access to statewide and local elections. Subsection B lays out the membership. The committee shall be composed of the following members, two members of the House, not from the same political party, who shall be appointed by the Speaker, two current members of the Senate, not from the same political party, who shall be appointed by the Committee on Committees, 
three, four representatives of municipalities, including a representative of the Vermont League of Cities and Towns and the Towns Clerks Association. Four, uh, four representatives representing the interests of voters, including a representative from the Vermont Public Interest Research Group, the Executive Director of Racial Equity or Designee, the National Vote at Home Institute or Designee, and a registered Vermont voter. Uh, and lastly, the Director of the Secretary of State's Elections Division or Designee. Um, should I pause for questions or continue? I will continue. Uh, subsection sometimes, C. I would say, sometimes there are some people who don't like the idea of um, listing names of organizations and bills. I'm not, I'm not, I, don't, I don't necessarily feel that way, but there are definitely times when we've done that. People have said, well, you shouldn't list them by name. I'm not sure why, but I just say that that's something that might come up in some people's minds. Senator Colomar? Thank you, Senator Plinger. I agree. I, I don't, I mean, if you start putting deeper again, why not the League of Women Voters? Or, you know, there, there's a whole host of other organizations that you could put in there. There's got to be a better way to phrase that than to specifically call out um, however it's worded here. That's just my view. Yeah, I'm not convinced either way, but I think, Brian, you make a good point. I mean, because I've had, it's happened to me in the past when we put organizational names and things. Could say, you know, for people representing voters or whatever that, whatever that says, the interest of voters appointed by, well, I was going to say, you know, it comes down to either the governor or the pro tem or the speaker, but somebody you have to appoint those people. Yeah, I, I think just here I was trying to just get to some kind of balance quickly. Yeah, well, no, I think what you did was group, fine. What, it is fine, but I just think the some people may not I think was so. Most interested in is getting the director of racial equity and or right. me because we didn't talk about it much yesterday. But I see this as much as a, um, you know, trying to figure out how to expand rights for you know Vermont, you know, minorities and groups that are under you know served and you know, across the state of Vermont. And so if we can make sure there's a voice just at the table there. So that that's what I was trying to get here. But again, this is a, a quick, you know, my, my goal is at least to get a study committee into this bill and then work with the house obviously to refine things, but sure. you know, how do we address things going forward? Well, I'm not necessarily proposing we take those names out. I'm just raising it as a flag because other people may decide that we want to take it out. So I just want to make sure that we're aware of that. Yep, it, so noted. Right. What was the, I'm sorry, before you move on, what was the thing we were talking about the other day with Secretary of State's office when they said they had drafted language that we were talking about? It wasn't this, right? It was something else. Uh, okay. It was Joe Bennings. Joe, Joe Bennings. Bennings. Oh, right, right, okay, right. We haven't heard back from him yet. Okay, move on. Uh... Subsection C on page three, powers and duties. The committee shall study the ways Vermont can increase its residents' access to statewide and local elections, including examination of the following issues. First, whether town meeting day should be moved to a weekend or made a state holiday. Second, whether universal vote by mail should be required for municipalities that vote to apply an Australian ballot system. Third, whether universal vote by mail should be required for Vermont's general and primary elections. I kept it as general just in case the only thing that comes out ultimately is this study committee. Um, I didn't want to exclude general elections on the assumption that the remaining underlying bill will pass. Um, Fourth, whether universal vote by mail for statewide or local elections increases access to voting among Vermonters who are Black, Indigenous, or people of color, or among populations or communities with historically low voter, <clears throat> excuse me, voter turnout. Can I just say something about that? So I get definitely what's what the attempt is here. There's some difference between voter low voter turnout and being disenfranchised from voting. So, you know, it's just, I don't want it to be tagged that BIPOC people just have low voter turnout. <laughs> they have a history of having their vote suppressed and, um, and having been disenfranchised. So I don't know if we want to say those who have been disenfranchised from the vote and those with historic low voter turnout, but I just wouldn't want it to, I think Corey gets what I'm saying. Like, I just don't want to act like BIPOC sure. people haven't voted. <laughs> yep. 
But we could change the language a little bit. Would you take out the words black, indigenous, or people of color and put and just substitute what you said for those words? I I think that's that's fine. Those who have been disenfranchised from voting or those with historic low voter turnout. Historic low voter turnout is like students, if I'm just right. saying on the record, right? right. Young young people, they haven't been young people voting. are just yeah. <laughs> I, I think I would <laughs> take out category, yeah. I but would I take out racial. Yeah. I'm open to that. I, again, the, the point is, I just want to make sure we're increasing access to, to all groups and look at what the impediments have been for these groups and why they don't vote or, and it might be because, you know, as Senator Rahm said, because we've, we've made it really hard for them to vote and, you know, made it, you know, so on. So yeah, I'm not, that's fine with me if you guys want to make those changes. So I'm sorry, but Keisha, Keisha, could you just say those again, the phrase you had? Um, the, those who have historically been disenfranchised, disenfranchised from right. and populations that have historically had low voter turnout. Yeah, without getting out of, getting rid of the specific race references. Getting rid of those race references. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm doing it or doing it. I, I just heard two things. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought we were saying we would take your phrase and put it in there and eliminate the words black, indigenous, okay. or Correct. people of color. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Yeah. I think that is much better. Okay. Uh, I mean, when you say that we're going to get the Secretary of State's help, we don't list the Secretary of State as being a member of this committee, I don't think. And it needs to be. It, it is at the top of page three, uh, subdivision five. Oh, okay. I, oh, and the director was, yeah. Okay, sorry, I was missing that. So subsection D, assistance, the committee shall have the administrative, technical and legal assistance of the Secretary of State's office and the Office of Legislative Counsel. And then on page four, uh, there is a report requirement on or before July 1st, 2022. The committee shall submit a written report to the House and Senate Committees on Government Operations with its findings and any recommendations for legislative action. And just so you guys know, I chose the timing, knowing the groups yesterday. They, if we, I don't buy the argument that it's going to take them the next year and a half to get ready for next 22 election because we just did the 22 election in 2020 with four months run up. But two, if we don't have a study, they're not, if we do a study in the fall, it's going to be right before the election. They're going to complain about that. And if we don't have a study ready to go by 23, we're not going to be able to do this until 25, just with election changes. So it, that to me was just too long. So in my mind, this gives them a year, a little bit longer than a year um to do well, a study yeah and we're giving them a new position which right, i feel that's like kind of reference yesterday yeah then mm -hmm. they kind of were saying we don't have the bandwidth to do this i mean so, i don't buy it <laughs> yes ma'am which of the many ma'ams would senator that be clarkson. me <laughs> senator clarkson right um i just you know, in July of 2022, Corey, ideally no one's going to be around. You know, it just, it, I, under, I absolutely understand that uh, we want to take it up first thing in January because that January 23 will, that 23 session is when we can change election law. So uh, in that next biennium. But just, July, it, it, um, it doesn't give them any chance to benefit and profit from what we learned in the election of 22. So I hate to suggest this, but I would suggest that it be due December 15th because then it could benefit from everything they learn with their second rollout and uh, anything we might've learned with the town meeting stuff. So, uh, I'm fine with that. I just was trying to be a little sensitive to that. There, I felt they were going to push back on the time whenever we made it. Yeah, <laughs> so. I, I think they will. But we need this. You're absolutely right. We need this in pocket by January of 23. 
Right. So, and so I was just, I right. threw a dart at the, honestly, at the wall and said, um, this is one where it's a few months after town meeting and it's really before we get into the, you know, the hot and heavy of, of the election. But I don't disagree with your point. If, if you're comfortable asking them to have a final report in December, I certainly am. Yeah. I, I December think 1st, this, Allison. Well, given the general elections, the first week of November, I'd suggest the 15th. Just okay. it, we don't okay. technically yeah. need it until January 1st. But yeah. if we get it, ask it to be done by J December 15th, then they get it done before the holidays hit. That's a good idea. Yep. I would be fine with that. Okay, great. Uh, moving on to subsection F on page four, meetings. The director of the Secretary of State's election division shall call the first meeting of the committee to occur on or before August 15th, 2021. The committee shall select a chair from among, among its members at its first meeting. A majority of the membership shall constitute a quorum and the committee shall cease to exist on July 1st, 2022, which would need to change if you are right. changing That's the date. Till the 15th. Okay. Compensation and reimbursement for attendance at meetings during adjournment of the General Assembly, a legislative member of the committee serving in his or her capacity as a legislator shall be entitled to per diem compensation and reimbursement for not more than eight meetings. These payments shall be made from monies appropriated to the General Assembly. Was there a reason for eight, Corey? No, I was just timing out how often I thought they would meet in a year, two year time piece. And I find I've been on these study committees where like five meetings is probably not enough. But again, it was just trying to get you know, I, I fully expect the House to vet this and you know this process. I get this an amendment. This is coming late. I think it just needs to be a toehold in there that we expect okay. it to grow. But you know, my thought was I didn't think it needed to be monthly, but you know, fairly regularly to get you know this done. Um, okay. I think there's a lot we're asking them to consider, and you know, they're going to collect data and yep. you know. Okay. Thank you. And then subdivision two, members of the committee representing municipalities, um, yeah. you know what, that actually probably should be amended a bit. Um, members of the committee representing municipalities and the interests of voters um, shall be entitled to per diem compensation and reimbursement of expenses um, as permitted under 32 VSA section 1010 for not more than eight meetings. These payments shall be made for monies appropriated to the Secretary of State's office. Which I'm sure he won't like either, but. No, why would that be the case? Why? why? Put it there. I mean, this part would probably get stripped out if it was going to approach anyway, and they'd figure it out. So it's <laughs> hammering. So but, it... but study committees are usually paid for by the legislature. But it's the Secretary of State's goal to increase voter participation. It may well be, but right. uh, it's unusual. It doesn't mean they want to spend their own money doing it. It, we're, giving them a whole, first. we're giving them a whole position for somebody who has to do something every other year. Uh, <laughs> no, they're work hopefully they're working all the time. Uh, I actually uh, figured it'd be funny to leave it in. <laughs> <laughs> See if he even picks up on it. Well, I if I picked up on it, they'll pick up on it. I mean, I think at the end of the day, and obviously it looks like we'll have a, a substitute amendment if you support the concept. To me, is is we got to get the study committee so that when we come back in twenty three, we can have a, the true thoughtful discussion. And I get amendments, unfortunately, when they come in late in the process like this, or or never as well as having the committee process do it. But at least I think the importance of adding it now is letting the house know that we do want to address this and and please take a deeper look that we you know unfortunately just didn't take a look. And then they're going to send a revised bill back, as my guess, and then you guys can take a little deeper dive then and and clean up the language a little bit. I by no means expect this to be the final language of the study committee, but well, I think we yes. want to make sure it's in there. I agree. I also think going back up to the other part of the, of the amendment, when we talk about mailing out the absentee ballot forms and whatnot, 
there'll be a discussion about what the form should look like. Should the Secretary of State design it? There'll be those kinds of questions as well. Yeah. So that you don't have different towns doing different forms, different ways of going about it. You want to make it uniform, I would presume. Any other questions, comments, ideas? No. I, I just, yeah, this is a question I think for probes, but I'm not sure we can appropriate the Secretary of State's money. We can only appropriate our own money. I mean, I'm not sure we can tell somebody I mean, else to spend our something. money, but I'm I'm not sure. I just don't know if we have the authority to do that. Well, especially because the Secretary of State, it says, so we made for monies appropriated to the Secretary of State's office. We don't really appropriate money to no, the Secretary of State's no. office. They're self-funded. Mm. Well, well mostly we, should we, are. we should change that to the general fund. Anyway, yeah, we I, should. I Even though it would be fun to keep it in, I think it, yeah. that we don't appropriate money to the Secretary of State's no. office unless I'm missing something. And we don't usually appropriate money for study committees. They just that happens, and we add it all up at the end of the. That's you know, why I there. figured. I don't know if it made sense just to remove the money section of this piece because appropes would anyway. But we'd still yeah. just oh, you know what else? Because also, it's an amendment that Jeanette, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Jeanette's been to appropriations to talk about this bill. And if we put we put yes. this in here with appropriation involved in it, appropriation is going to want to take it back off the floor and like add up these numbers. Well, any study point. committee that directs that people are paid it is an, an assumed appropriation. So uh, anyway, we can ask Jane. If we decide to do this, Jeanette can have a sidebar with Jane, or one of us can. Or the house can put it back in. Yeah, right. exactly. So yeah, it's I customary. It I, I thought it was customary for someone proposing an amendment that was found favorable by the policy committee to then go to the money committee and ask it, for it, a vote as well. Yeah, or the reporter, either one. OK. I'm just learning. I was like, I thought we could still have a bill that has an appropriation, but it would yeah. have another step. At just channel OB. We can do whatever we want. Right. Mike Obahoski. We the so, good old yeah. days. Well, Sorry. I would I say, I would, well, I would just say that I don't think we I, I think the committee feels like we shouldn't vote on this without having the chair at least be a part of the conversation. Oh, which, absolutely. I mean, she's which not, be just not the it's her, This is her bill, too. So we're not going to vote on it today. Um, is the bill going to be on the floor then tomorrow? No, we're going to pass. Well, unless Jeanette has a miracle recovery and comes in raring to go. So yes, it sounds so like, to me, might make sense is, is to ask Amron to make a few of the slight changes we had and then consider it a substitute amendment and then of this amendment. You know, I just was trying to get one in the calendar today, thinking we were going on the floor tomorrow. Right. So it was no, you, that was a good thought. A rush. Um, but I think if if we if it looks like we're not taking this up to early next week, certainly happy to to you know maybe grab someone on this committee too that I can work with to clean up some of the language and just make it a little smoother, just to get that foothold in the bill to send to the house. Because if worse came to worse, time wise, you could always just present this on the floor. Right. So that, which that could work just as well. I mean, I think it'd be better to incorporate it into the bill if that's what we want to do, but. Yeah, I do too. And I, I would hope to have your support because usually with people in my party, when we present things on the floor without the committee support, it doesn't go very far. <laughs> yeah. Well. I know I, the feeling. <laughs> so Amarin, if you're able to make these changes in the amendment and send it to Jeanette tonight, she may be slowly recovering uh, from her second vaccination. So she may, might be able to actually look at it tonight. And in case she I did she send does, her an email earlier today and she did not respond. But that was earlier today. She might be ready to respond this yeah. evening. So you can do that, Emery? Yes, I can. And send us a copy. The only thing I wasn't certain about was where we landed with the the funding piece. <laughs> I, I don't know you guys. I mean, with the time, I'd almost remove because I feel like approach just removes that stuff anyway. So we might as well just say, "Hey, we didn't put it in this." And I can say on the floor, 
we didn't put any of that in this amendment just to avoid that piece and we knew it would be removed but you know something we'd likely as this works through the process could we'd be asking you know could happen i'm fine leaving it out leaving it out yep yeah yeah i'm so, okay with leaving it out i mean I'm people really like vperg if or those kinds of organizations they're going to be sending staff people anyway I would think, or board members, people who are not going to need to be reimbursed necessarily. So are we talking about taking out one and two uh, at the bottom of the page? Or are we just talking about taking out two? One and two. Again, I think the House can put it back in if they want. And um, I, I don't know that we need to uh, worry about it. Uh, and we didn't really decide about whether to put specific groups in it yet either, like deeper again. Right. Uh, well, I think that's a discussion with Jen. I would say that you can't really have a study committee without having the per diems identified. Um, I, I hear what you're saying. I just, I would feel more comfortable leaving one in and taking two out. Um, okay. But it's sure. no, that'd be okay. All right. I mean, legislators need a per diem, and uh, because they are not paid by anybody else to be there, and this is their work. And um, yeah, everybody else, it's their job generally, uh, of the other people who have been identified. So we're taking out two, but we're leaving in one. I would propose that. I would second that. I would third it. Sure. And we could have the discussion about what those groups are when we talk with Jeanette. Sure. I mean, I'm not, like I said, I'm not, I'm not opposed to having the named organizations. Yeah. I just think that it, sometimes it opens up a can of worms with people. Yeah, I don't, I don't well, like the... Yeah, I, I think it's actually a relatively representative group, but um, anyway, uh, and, and actually Will yeah. Stunning, Oh, and Carol, that the League of Women Voters. I don't know. That's a good suggestion. In fact, they, you know, they do a lot of voter outreach. They just sent me actually four pamphlets in other languages about how to vote in Vermont. It's very nice. It's so interesting because they have such a non-presence in our neck of the woods. So I think they must be very active in Washington and Chittenden County. But that could that could be they heard me say something about language access for voting and mailed me all their little pamphlets. So I don't oh, know. Lila is so she's good. <laughs> she's so she's so good. Yeah, I mean, I'm not again, this was just Amber and I just trying to think of groups quick last night that you Yeah, know, it's a good I think it's a good start and it's gotten us thinking about it. So that's good. Yeah, that was my goal. And then, like I said, it's I get amendments a lot of times coming at the end. You know, it, it, we didn't have the debate over the people like we would on a normal study committee, but you know, this still has a little ways to go through the process. This is just its first iteration to just get a placeholder. And, and I think it, you know, sends the message we're serious about actually increasing voter participation across all elections, not just one. Good. Great, I think this is good. And Amarin, if you could send this off to Jeanette, now I'll call Jeanette when we're, when we're done and just see how she is and, and give her a heads up, it's coming. Or Anthony, you can. Oh, you can call her, that's fine. I have another meeting. I have two more Zooms to do before the day is over. I'm really late. Well, yesterday I got I was so Zoomed out. I couldn't, I mean, I was like a vegetable by the time I was done. I yeah. go to a city council meeting and I mean, it just, it's just, it it's, tears your brain out. Yeah, I know I, I've been on Zooms like, the last couple of days till 8 30 at night it's been too much it's too much i was very glad to be able to skate last night and referee oh hockey. how great uh, did you was it a ref was it were you refing? i have to run i'm sorry all right well, thank you <laughs> very much touch. for coming <laughs> yes allison i'm too old to play i uh no. i left my house for the first time in a week today for like a half an hour yeah right around it's very block. strange yeah yeah i was uh really yesterday. I bet. But it must have been invigorating to be back skating. Oh, no. Yeah, no, it, it woke. I didn't get home till almost 11. But um, it uh, 
It was nice. I drove right through Woodstock. I thought of you. I was on my way to Hartford. You, it, you just let, you know, I wish you'd let me know when you're playing games in my neck of the woods, because I'd actually come and watch them. I, I, Brian, I do they wear masks? Oh, yeah, everybody had to wear a mask. And we have an electronic whistle. We can't blow the whistle anymore because it throws the right. virus in the air, supposedly. Yeah. Okay. It does. Well, it's why people... Off. I'll head out. Although I enjoy okay. being part of your committee. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I didn't Thanks a lot, Corey. I didn't mean to. You know, I think I might be... So the other one thing I'll notice is I'm, I think I might be the only senator who serves on a committee without a, a female senator all day long. I'm on two committees that are all male Senate, all male senators. So. Oh my God! Institutions. It's nice to get some diversity. <laughs> I thought you were on education in the afternoon. Institutions. Weren't you on education? Last term. Ah. Well, yeah. Good work. Thank you. Yeah. See ya. Thanks a lot, Corey. Thank you, Mojo. So without Michelle. Thank you.